Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris in our Song of the Stars series. So we have a colony ship on the way to Eulasia. Let's go ahead and unpause it. Just let that colony ship do its thing. We also have a bit of a deficit issue just on account of building so many mining stations and maybe still needing a few, you know, power related structures. Speaking of that, I do have one thing that I can do. Actually, no, I don't. The solar panel network has already been built, so System we are going to have to do some work to find some additional power production, like building a new. This is interesting, actually. I don't think I've ever seen just by bad luck, I suppose, a situation where there's this little. I mean, look how few power producing type buildings there are in this space. There's just not that many. Okay, there's some in Brachma, that's good. But as far as energy credits, there's just not a lot going on in the surrounding space. So I'm going to have to rely on surface structures in order to get things built up. For instance, I need to clear this and I need to move. Okay, I do have a pop that's about to that's about to be completed here. Let's go ahead and build a power plant on that square. And then tell you what, let's get you moved. Let's get you moved there right now and we'll put you on that square and build a power plant there as well. So that helped a little bit with our deficit. Uh, but we also, I need to clear this. That's already been queued. I did that a second ago. Wow, okay. Well, that will help, especially as, let's take a look at what we're researching. And not, re not researching anything at the moment that'll help with power, but let's speed things up just a little bit again. Our construction ship in Saramore is done. What else can you do? Can you maybe go build a research station for me? That'd be great, thanks. Our colony ship has found a rare patch of open ground in the jungles of Eulasia Prime and made Planetfall. The landing site is surrounded on all sides by lush vegetation and sentry drones have been deployed to guard against predators. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers, the first Voices city on an alien world. A great day for the Voices. So our colony is going to slowly establish itself on Eulasia Prime and <laughs> we, we need to... Yeah, we're going to need to focus on energy production on this planet. Wow. Just like I said, all right, Brachma is nearby and will give me three more energy credits, but my core systems only have these four energy credits in Wrath as far as mineable extraplanetary energy sources. That is that is a huge priority to fix right now because we have a deficit. And we'll be able to overcome it pretty quickly, don't get me wrong. It's not like it's a huge issue, it's going to keep us down for episode after episode, but it's definitely something that's going to be on the top of the list for this episode, and maybe the next one as well. Let's see how things are going on the surface here. Can't build a um, orbital station here and do some additional power. Um, what was it? What are they called? I was just looking at them. Solar panel network. That provides three more there as well, but I can't do that until such time as that Special colony project. is established. Special project completed. Sp space officer? Science officer. Cytophane Kalumex has managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Coronis 2. The text contains a staggering amount of data, and the mural evidently serves as some sort of low-tech library. It describes in broad terms the collected technological knowledge of an alien civilization that dominated this region of the galaxy some 80 million years ago. A lot of it is already known to us, but the data does contain several promising leads for technologies we had yet to consider. There is enough data here to keep our scientists busy for decades, but we will need to establish an orbital research facility to continue the translation efforts. Intriguing. So where is this again? Nice. So this planet here, this is a barren world, but we can build a research station here, which I think not quite in the process of doing, but I'll queue one up now, and that will be 
a phenomenal aid to our future endeavors. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Nalzaroth. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable life bearing worlds, a commendable initiative. So that's a, quiz, a quest quiz thing that you get every single... Um, Stellaris playthrough. So we have to survey eight habitable worlds, and we get that automatically. Good, we got our research speed boost. Awesome, let's go for... Ooh, I like the idea of faster survey speed. We want to spread out into the void quickly and efficiently. Alright, science ship is done doing its thing here. Let's go ahead and investigate this system, shall we? And where else will we need to be colonizing? Eulacia doesn't have any other worlds yet. Duranma, I, yes, Duranma is going to be the next one, that tropical world, or possibly that ocean world first. I think that was the one we talked about as the first colony before I discovered Eulacia. Okay, Brockfa is not quite in our borders just yet. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> and it will be soon, so we'll be able to get those energy credits as soon as they're available. That's handy. Big old galaxy. I am finding myself a little bit um, concerned. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Brockma just entered our border, so let's go ahead and build a mining station. Um, I'm finding myself a little bit concerned over the fact that I went with a huge universe for this because I have heard rumblings of you know performance issues once the game gets into the late game. And I don't know if those have been resolved. You guys can let me know in the comments. Hopefully, as we get to the higher episode numbers in this series, uh, that's not going to be an issue. Um, but, I mean, it did occur to me after I started the game, like, well, maybe a huge galaxy wasn't the best idea. I like a huge galaxy from a storytelling perspective and from a realism perspective, but, you know, hopefully it'll work out. The signal we intercepted was a distress call from a ship in orbit around Itrabin 2B. The ship is not giving away any heat signatures and seems to be drifting. A special project has been issued to investigate what happened to the crew. Intriguing. Derelict ship. Okay. Colony's been established. Very good. Let's um, see what's going on here. Do that research project and then... No, no, no. No, no. Do the research project. And then keep surveying. All right. We officially have a colony now. So... How soon can we build? Okay, it's going to need 360 minerals before we can build a, um... Special project complete. Before we can build a spaceport, that's fine. The crew of the ship have been found dead. What is more disturbing is that they appear to have been killed by some highly advanced brain parasites which infested them and turned them mad. Thanks to Science Officer Cytofan Kalumix's findings, we can protect our own crew from being infected. Society research gain. Very good. Alright, so, let's see. Our first pop is growing here. Let's go ahead and make that a farm focus. So we're going to lose a little bit of minerals by virtue of converting that to a farm, but I want to be able to make the most out of that initial population and food on that planet. So we our energy deficit is gone. How is it gone? So this is the total number of energy credits available on this planet, but... Maybe the colony ship had a large drain on the maintenance costs while it was still converting. Maybe that's what it was. Alright, so we're going to build mining stations here. Uh, you keep surveying. I'm going to queue up just a bunch of orders here. I'll let this science vessel explore some of the nearby systems. So let's take a closer look at our new colony. This is Eulacia Prime. Starting to see some lights on the far side of the world. That's one thing I would like to see in Stellaris, is the slow development of these cities to where it starts and maybe you just see this and nothing else. And then as the colony grows and it's been around longer, there's just more and more lights. Because right now it's like, oh, hey, look, there's big cities everywhere, which we just established the colony. Come on. <laughs> it's just a realism thing that I, I would imagine wouldn't be too difficult to work with. Comet sighted. Groups of voices watched a comet streak across, this, across the sky of Nalzaroth. The appearance of this lonely stellar object 
caused seemingly disproportionate distress and voices turned to voices for assurance that they are not alone. They are convinced that this is a sign of coming isolation and splintering of coral society. Interesting. So we're still superstitious at this point. So we're fanatic collective... Uh, uh, weird. All right. Well, that's... Huh. I wouldn't have thought that the way I designed this race, um, that that would have been a concern. But okay. Maybe we'll grow past that at some point in the future. I'm going to go ahead and queue up a research station here as well. And speaking of queuing things up, let's go ahead and get an additional... Need to wait until the end of this month, but we do need an additional science ship. So we're going to do that. Let me take a second to look at the ship designer. Now that some updates have been made to this. So this is the Corvette. This is our construction ship. We did a new design. Now we've got the standard options. I'm not really going to do anything right now with, with custom designs. I'm just curious to see what this looks like now. Um, so this is an auxiliary slot. These are a bunch of small slots. And then the Corvettes. Interesting. Corvettes are supposed to have torpedo slots. I don't see any right now, but uh, maybe... This, this is a medium size slot, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But anyway, we'll, we'll keep looking at that as the game continues. I, I want to kind of see what the game auto-generates first with some of these new ship designs before I start reading too much into maybe how I should design my own ships. All right, so we've got this ship investigating Beneth... What's it called? Bennett Nash. Construction <laughs> complete. Looks like a pretty desolate system. Complete. Okay, good. We got a new science vessel. Let's go ahead and promote a new... Oh yeah, I definitely want to have improved anom anomaly discovery chance. System survey complete. Research complete. Okay, research complete. What do we have? Oh good, spaceport level 2. <laughs> and I can go straight for spaceport level 3 if I wanted to and have higher mineral storage capacity. Tell you what, let me go ahead and just go for powered exoskeletons because that's the cheapest research option. It'll be done relatively soon. Meanwhile, we're going to send our new science ship out here. And I'm also going to start working on my third colony. Actually, I want to try and build two colony ships because we can have two colonies in Duranma, which would really be helpful. Let's have a look at our colonies to make sure that we've built everything we could possibly build, which we haven't, actually. Need more food production on these worlds, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Hydroponic farm. Hydroponic farm. And we'll get back to that in just a second. What about on our new colony? How are things looking? New pop is still growing for the first time here. I need to build a power plant here. So I'm going to go ahead and build that and make sure the next pop shows up there. Because I want to make sure that we don't have a deficit like the one we started out this episode with. And I do need to clear those tiles as well, so we're going to work on that. Our survey has uncovered something that, we that can only be described by the science team as mystical. We would need to investigate the phenomenon in more detail to unshroud the mystery. Go ahead and research it. Research. That is a level 4 anomaly, but this is a high level scientist. Cytophane Kylumex has done a lot of research, so this could be this could be good. Research complete. We research terraforming, nice and early. Ooh, faster growth. Let's go for it. Growth time minus 10%. Absolutely. And again, we have a spark of genius researcher in uh, Idrix Kalizem here. So that's very good. All right, Tau Signa to... Ooh, wow. 
This is a, we're gonna leave B for now because that's our new scientist and that's a really high failure rate right now. Whoa, hey. Okay, so we've got pirates. Construction ship Cresco Panon has encountered a hostile pirate fleet Eshuk and is currently attempting to evade them. Certain irrational and criminal elements of our society have left Nalzaroth to seek an outlaw's life in the far reaches of space. In a display of surprising ingenuity, these brigands have heavily modified and weaponized a large number of civilian starships. Our civilian shipping lanes are now being raided by this improvised Starfleet, which identifies itself only as the Dark Riders. A prompt response is needed. These non-conformists will be dealt with. All right, well, now we're going to have to build some additional ships. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Queue up a couple of Corvettes. Hey! We have detected the presence of a primitive alien civilization on Jindet in the Tau Cygni system. They have advanced into the equivalent of an Iron Age and are divided into numerous petty kingdoms and empires. Crusader Kings to anybody? Their species has spread across almost the entire surface of the planet. We should consider buying an observ building an observation post above their world to study them more closely. Cool. All right, now, where are the pirates? Though? Oh, wow. Okay, so the pirates are attacking my mining base. That's not cool. All right, so we're going to need to take care of that. That's unfortunate. Among the asteroids around LR 966, a tree is drifting through the emptiness of space, an unprecedented and highly unlikely event. The tree is surrounded in a protective bubble reminiscent of an energy shield. Suddenly, we detect some hostile space dwellers on approach. This coincided with some sap leaking through the tree shield while, while we collected samples. Could it have agitated the creatures? We need to figure out what's going on. So let's research the tree. Let's get that taken care of. Lots of interesting things happening, at least. Really need to take care of the pirates, though. Waiting for those Corvettes to build. Uh, we're going to leave that be for now. We've, we've had a number of anomalies pop up that, frankly, just this new scientist is not equipped to deal with yet. Situation log updated. Before we develop faster-than-light travel, several sublight exploration probes were dispatched from Nalzaroth at near-relativistic speeds towards nearby systems. The scientists who developed the probes naively included sensitive information about our culture and their memory cores as a form of greeting to alien civilizations. It has now been realized that this data could potentially be used against us. We need to track down these probes before they are found by someone or something unsympathetic to our species. They can't have gotten far begins the sublight exploration probes project complete. oh cool so tell you what let's go ahead and track these systems all right let's see so we need to visit okay they're not far these are the four probe systems so we can definitely go find those After rigorous research, we now understand why the tree sap summoned those creatures. The tree is able to produce a highly nutritious substance, which has machine-like abilities to repair organic tissue. The tree is a tree of life. If we harvested it, we could use it to expand the lifespan of our people. But there's one problem. The tree's healing power is limited in amount. We can only use it to improve a small group of people's life substantially or increase everyone's situation by a small amount. Shared elixir of life. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Happiness plus five. We're going to give it to the people. Okay, so... Pirates have arrived in our research system. That's not good. We're still waiting for Corvettes to build. Let's unpause. Actually, wait, you need to come here. All right, pirates are now in Saramore. Come on, Corbettes. I need you yesterday. Complete. Station under attack. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the Lum Reva has picked up a signal from a discarded signal buoy belonging to one of our missing sublight probes in the Bennett Nosh system. 
there is an ion trail leading away from the buoy on a trajectory towards another star, suggesting that someone has towed the probe there for unknown reasons. Let us see where this trail leads. Interesting. Follow ion trail. All right, so we're going to survey that system. And tell you what, we're going to go ahead and survey that one too, because that's where the other probe was anyway. Okay, good. The new scientist has leveled up. So there's a couple of research projects here. Okay, the failure rate has gone down now on these. It's already performing this order. What are you talking about? No, it's not. We found our missing probe. A small fleet of jury rigged ships has been detected in the Hobrock system, and one of them has the probe locked in a short range tractor beam. They're hailing us on screen. Interesting. What do you want, alien? This probe ours. Salvage. We find first. You leave now. Yes. Interrupting delicate operation your ships are. Must concentrate. Or, if you want a probe, we can sell. 100 credits and probe yours. Good deal. Very good. You get probe, less work for us. Everybody wins. Especially us. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let's... I gotta... I gotta see this. Unfortunately, I can't... Hang on. Let's have a look at, at these, uh... Alright, it's not a particularly powerful fleet. Alright, tell you what. We've got the credits. Let's just... <laughs> let's go ahead and just give them the credits. Very good, very good. We release probe into your care. Maybe a bit banged up. There was accidental collision during salvage operation. Migwai fell on controls. Clumsy oaf. But probe still in good condition. No refunds. We depart now. <laughs> the salvagers kept their word and transferred the probe over to our con over at our control. As soon as the transfer was complete, their fleet departed the system on an unknown heading. Although the probe is in rough condition, we managed to download detailed sensor readings of the entire Habrock system from its memory banks. Excellent. All right, so now we're going to investigate the other system where there might be a probe. Construction complete. Lumreva has detected one of our missing sublight probes in the Ejoc system. We should begin recovery efforts as soon as updated. possible. Alright, so that's what I'm here to do. Okay, research that please. So this is where we need to build a uh, observation post. What's going on here? Hostile fleet in Coronis. Are my... Yes, these ships are ready. I kind of want to build one more, though. Just to make sure they have a good advantage. So let's build one more Corvette. Screw it, let's build two more. I want to make sure they're able to defeat these pirates handily. Because the Dark Riders are kind of making me mad. New music. I like it. We also need to think about a new colony soon. These pirates have been a little bit distracting from that objective. Oh, wow. Oh, crap! We just lost our science ship. While rerouting power to the main sensor array, the Lum Barracks experienced a critical reactor failure above Tau Signa 2. The vessel's science officer perished in the resulting explosion, along with the rest of the crew. Unfortunate. Well, crap! That was a really... That was like a 30% failure risk. What a bad die roll. Okay. Well, we're going to need to build another science ship, too. Son of a bitch. We really needed that second science ship not to die that quickly. Bad luck. That's fine. It's very rarely happened to me in Stellaris, so it's a little bit frustrating. <laughs> but, it, I mean, it's it's just a percent chance. 30% of the time. Alright, so we're almost done with our final Corvette here. Before I end this episode, we're going to give these pirates what for. Construction complete. Okay, let's pay them a visit, shall we?
construction complete. Jumping to hyperspace. Or maybe not. <laughs> Special project complete. We have recovered the sublight probe in the Ejox system. The sensor's telemetry it has collected over the years has provided us with a complete survey of all planetary bodies within the system. Good. All right, so let's see what else is going on here. Research complete. All right, we need to bring our other science ship over to finish the research in this area to finish the work of the first scientist. Really unfortunate that happened. Oh, hey, research completed. Missed that completely. Uh, hmm, Power Hub 1. Yeah, definitely. Let's go for that. That's going to help with power production. Speaking of that, hang on. Let's... No, no, no. I want to look at the surface. How are we looking here? Do I have any... I need to build a farm there, but it's not as important as potentially building... Okay, so we've got a power plant ready there, but the population hasn't grown yet. All right, so the surface is actually okay. Let me save up for that colony ship. Meanwhile... All right, let's do the dance. Slow things down. Gonna get to hear the new combat effects for the first time. Oh, the pirates just left the system, so we're gonna attack their base instead. That's actually kind of convenient. And hopefully they'll come back once the battle's over. <laughs> and I'll kill them too. Okay, so the pirate fleet is heading for Eulasia. They're heading for our new colony. Jerks. Alright, so this combat is uh, going slowly. But we are winning it. I do think they've done a good job with the bloom effects in the game. I talked about this in the last episode, talked about it a little bit in the uh, Heinlein preview as well. They mentioned that they were very careful, again, not to not to overdo it, because bloom is very often overdone. I think it looks great. Station under attack. All right, so there's a station under attack somewhere. Meanwhile, we're killing their station. Let's speed things up a little bit, because these ships are taking their sweet time destroying this defenseless station. Defenseless station. Did we lose a Corvette? No, 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 we didn't. We had we had five, then it built up to seven. What do we have here? Unsolicited mapping. Intercepting the distress signal, the Lumriva sends a probe down to the volatile surface of Tau Signi 1. It seems an unregistered freighter recently crashed on the planet. Whatever it was carrying has been reduced to Asin reduced un-Ashen Sludge, to Ashen Sludge, but some data from the navigation computer can be recovered and survey data for the system reconstructed. Okie doke. Well, hang on, let's... Let's get the ships over to the other side of the galaxy here. Not the galaxy, but the other side of the uh, of the territory. And actually, on that note, we have crossed the 29-minute mark for the recording. So I'll go ahead and cut this episode here. In the next one, we are going to probably establish another colony or two so that we can continue to build up a uh, an income base in um, our territory here. We are nowhere near our core system cap. And the nice thing is, when we establish some colon colonies in Duranma, we're actually going to have two options for that. So... The Duranma system uh, gives it has the ocean world, which is 23 population slots, going to be very productive, and a 13-slot uh, tropical 
world as well. And that our population will, of course, be very happy there because tropical is our central type. So that's going to be a good system to expand to. And then, of course, we can expand to Saramora as well, again, without coming to our actual system cap yet. So lots to do. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along if you're not subbed already. I upload new episodes in Song of the Stars every day at 6 Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus 4 for those of you not in the States. And comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next episode.